Uh, I'm just going to tell you very quickly, this is going to be uh, incredibly fast because it's incredibly complicated what blockchain and Bitcoin are, so um, stick with it. So uh, this is me, a uh, big picture of me. I used to work for the largest cloud company in the world. Uh, I used to advise companies, large companies, about a whole load of things. Uh, you don't need to know any more than that. That's my Twitter. Um, right. Uh, I also uh, care about the climate and climate change. I've written a white paper on how data centers um, use a lot of energy, and it's a bad thing. Um, and I've also done a petition about this. This will become more important later in the talk, and I'm running for a very, very good reason, because data centers uh, use more than 2% of, uh, create more than 2% of global carbon emissions. It's a bad thing, um, and again, this will become more important later in the talk. Right, so back to the point of this part of the, the, you know, the session. What actually is blockchain? It's also called something called distributed ledger technology. Lots of big words, it's a bit more complicated, nobody really understands it, so let's go through it. Okay, this is a ledger, it's a bunch of transactions in a list. Very straightforward. Um, now, if you've got this, you uh, end up with a situation where you can actually walk in, you can just change things, because that's what happens. So you can basically move money around from one person to another, and that does, that's no help to anybody. So what you actually want to do is you want to make a way of making it difficult to change. So what you do is you put a thing called a hash in it which is cryptographic, hence why you get crypto, uh, and that is a, a one-way hash. It's a clever bit of maths, uh, ignore it, uh, but essentially it's a way of auditing and verifying whether or not someone's changed the transaction. Very useful, except you could change the transaction and the hash, so you don't really want to do that. So what you do is you then create a block of hash transactions, uh, and then you use all of the hashes together and create another block hash, which is very helpful, but you could then create, change the transaction, and then you could create the hash, and then you could change the block hash. So so that's not particularly very helpful. Um, so what you then end up with is you create a, an initial block, which is your genesis block, and then you create a second block, and you put uh, something in the previous, in, into the next block, which is a reference to the first block, and then you put a, in the third block a reference to the second block, and then you hash those blocks together, and then what, what you end up with is a blockchain. <laughs> so then what you do is you distribute it to a bunch of people. So if you've got, the, the pictures haven't quite come out right, it doesn't matter. But if essentially, if you distribute those four blockchains to four different people, you have a distributed ledger. That is distributed ledger technology, that is the basis of blockchain. And then if you distribute it to a whole bunch of people, you make it very, very hard to then change the transactions within the blockchain. That's all very interesting. Why is this useful? By the way, that's the quickest I've ever done that, so just enjoy it. <laughs> Whew. So, um, essentially, it is a tamper-evident, append-only ledger. You can't actually go in and change anything because it's distributed and changed. It's very quick to verify. The hashes do that for you. Um, it's impossibly slow to fake. You just can't change anything. You, you need an awful lot of power to find out how to change all the transactions and do it yourself. It's actually, um, in computer science, it's called a Merkle tree. Go and Google it. Um, it's actually not new, and it's used in this thing called Bitcoin. Uh, how, I didn't see how many hands went up when they'd heard of Bitcoin. Who's heard of Bitcoin? Everyone's heard of Bitcoin. Right, this is where you're going to go, oh, okay. Right, Bitcoin. Uh, it uses blockchain, it uses a blockchain ledger underneath it. So basically, there's a whole load of ledgers around the world that contain a whole load of blocks and a whole load of hashes and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, and the way that you get a Bitcoin is that someone somewhere decides on a whole bunch of transactions of Bitcoin, and they put them into a block, and then a whole bunch of computers around the world go off and try and find the block hash. I'm not kidding, they're all trying to do it at the same time, and they're all trying to find one number and make it small enough, and the first one to get there wins and gets the Bitcoin, and everyone goes, yay! except they're all trying to do it, and then they start all over again. Now, the problem with this is they're all trying to do it. It's a massive lottery, and they're using an awful lot of power to do it. It's massively inefficient. Uh, and the other part of it is it's, it's strongly libertarian in its ideology. So uh, basically, it's we want to make as much money as possible, and we want to hide it from the government, because the, the, the ledger is distributed. It's not distributed to governments. It's distrib distributed to people, and it's hidden. You can, everyone can see, it, can see it, but it's also anonymous. So all of the wallets and all of the Bitcoin uh, transactions are essentially anonymous. You don't know who they are. It's possible you can just about, if you know what you're doing, work out roughly who it is, but it's not necessarily straightforward. 
Um, and the other thing is, which I was talking about earlier, climate change, bad. Bitcoin will use 0.5% of the world's electricity by the end of 2018. 0.5%. Who thinks that's a good thing? Good, I'm glad no one put the hand up. Um, it's literally just using computers to guess numbers. That is literally all that Bitcoin mining is. Uh, and that is the same amount of electricity as Ireland uses. So basically, there's a whole bunch of rich people around the world, Bitcoin mining, to try and make themselves more Bitcoin. And they're doing, or using all of the power of Ireland to do it. And while we're doing that, we're basically suffering from climate change. It's a really bad thing. So Bitcoin, let's just get this right, is bad. Um, if you have any, please get rid of it. Please have nothing to do with it. Personal opinion, but that's basically what I think. So cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin is technically a cryptocurrency. The, the hash is a cryptographic hash. So crypto, Bitcoin is a currency. It's a sort of currency. So cryptocurrency. So there are other cryptocurrencies. They are called altcoins because they're essentially based on Bitcoin when Bitcoin became popular, which it started in 2009. And then everyone else, a few other people thought, oh, that's cool. And they created their own. So there's others like Ethereum and Ripple, and there's hundreds and thousands. Or, there are thousands. Um, and they're, and they're regulated. They're unregulated. They're not regulated. They're not run by governments. Uh, you can basically do what you like. You can create your own if you particularly want to. Please don't. Um, and they use something called... So the, the whole lottery thing, the Bitcoin mining, is called proof of work. Some of them use proof of stake, which is basically if you've got enough, you can be involved in the lottery. Again, not particularly great. Um, but it's not good. ICOs. Who's heard of ICOs? A few people. It's like, it's like IPO, but it's like... Anyway. <sighs> All these things you need to know about. Initial coin offering. So essentially, when you create a, a, you can, when you create a coin, an altcoin, you can uh, offer your investors tokens, which are essentially you just give them something like a Bitcoin, which is an altcoin. Uh, and the investors hope they go up. And essentially, it's unregulated. Pretty much don't put money into an ICO unless you absolutely know it's going to go up, which it won't. So don't do it. Um, cryptocurrencies and ICOs are unregulated. That's the biggest problem with them. You pretty much will never get your money back. Um, be careful. Um, back to blockchain. So. <sighs> is blockchain technology useful? So um, the promises out there for blockchain are essentially what you get with Bitcoin. So when, when someone says you can use blockchain to do something, they're essentially saying Bitcoin does this so you can do it with blockchain. Uh, it, and what they're saying is things like it's decentralized, it's append only, it's tamper proof. Uh, and also, you can add things like smart contracts. Now, Ethereum, which is one of the other altcoins, uh, has something called smart contracts. That's essentially a little bit of code that gets embedded into a token which is one of these uh, transactions in the ledger. Um, and that basically gets run at a certain amount of time, so it so kind of feels like a contract. Um, and, uh, and so let's kind of go over some of the ways that people approach blockchain and, and Bitcoin and technologies. And this is a bit of a classic on the internet when you, when you talk to technologists. Uh, basically, do I need blockchain? No. Um, almost certainly not. So um, the, uh, don't just take my word for it. The uh, Australian government uh, did some research recently. This came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they did $700,000 of research as to whether or not they needed blockchain in their government technology. Uh, they said no. Um, every use of blockchain that you would consider today, there is a better technology. Kind of very simple to understand that. Um, there's also some Reddit humor. So Reddit's a nice, fun website if you ever want to go in there. Should you use blockchain? Are you making a cryptocurrency? No, then no. Yes, please stop. Um, Uh, and then there's another one. Uh, you can go and have a look at XKCD. It's quite fun. But uh, the, last, the last bit is um, they say they fixed it with something called blockchain. Ah, whatever they sold you, don't touch it. Bury it in the desert and wear gloves. Um, it's just that's how most technologies, technology people kind of come at this unless they're involved in it. And then they really start to think it's great. Uh, I have a friend of mine who um, kind of wanted to explain and show people how ridiculous it was. Um, to build something on the top of uh, blockchain. So there's this blockchain company uh, that built a blockchain for art called Verisart. And so my friend decided to uh, become Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and so he, he basically put in a request to have the Mona Lisa uh, under his name within this, uh, within this art blockchain. And they accepted it. So now within this art blockchain, he is now the painter of the Mona Lisa, 
which is brilliant, except for the fact that it's a pen only, and you can't change it. So forever, he will be the painter of the Mona Lisa within the Verisart blockchain. That's a problem. You can't change it. Forever. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, if you put bad data in, you just distribute encrypted bad data. So blockchains are not that great. Uh, there are very specific reasons for using them, and this isn't one of them. So, um, and smart contracts, I've kind of briefly mentioned them before. So smart contracts, a bit of code that you put inside a blockchain, it gets triggered under certain circumstances. It doesn't really matter what they are, but it works. Um, there was a company called Parity that uh, had a smart contract and lost $160 million worth of Ethereum because they had a bug in their code. That's $160 million that they will never get back. And they can't get back. It is irretrievable. So the point about it is that they can't even get it back from the law. They can't go to the law because it's a, it's a cryptocurrency. It's unregulated. It's out there somewhere. They can't go to anybody else and ask, well, can I have my money back? Because it's gone. It's, it's insane. Anyway, um, so blockchain success stories. Now, I, I'm, I'm being very negative, and there's a reason for being negative. Um, but it's mainly because I want you to be very careful with this technology if someone comes to talk to you about it. However, uh, if you have a look at The Economist online, uh, the technology quarterly, September 2018, there's some, there's some really good articles in there. I strongly recommend you go and have a look at it. Um, there were over a billion dollars worth of investments in the first five months of 2018. That's a good thing, but there are very few actual successes that they can point to. Uh, there was, it, and the big quote there is, it's a special hammer looking for the right nail. It's an interesting technology, but it's not really useful for anything apart from cryptocurrencies at the moment. So don't use blockchain. It's about knowing the tool. And basically, if you don't know what any of these things are, and one of those things is not real, um, um, then you probably shouldn't be going anywhere near blockchain. Uh, so, again, blockchain is a decentralized, append only, tamper evident ledger. If that's what you want to use, then great. And when should you use it? You should use it when you've got zero trust in all of the other parties around you, when you require unalterable data, and where regulation or law is unhelpful, which is really kind of a very specific set of use cases. And actually, is that really compatible? with Christian values. And I'd argue that maybe it isn't. It's not necessarily the kind of way that we should be treating other people and thinking about the way that we live our lives. Personal opinion again. So blockchain only, very, only fits very specific use cases. Do I need blockchain? Almost certainly not. Just use a normal database. Thank you very much.